Hi, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to another Rhino video. And today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the Hype Field tool, uh, Hype Field Map tool, which is held underneath the Create Service Tools. It's this guy down here. Um, and what this does is it generates an image from, or sorry, it generates a surface from analyzing the brightness or darkness of an image at certain points and creating a, um, a surface that is high where the image was brightest and low where the image was darkest so it kind of gives you a, a, a two-dimensional depiction depiction or three-dimensional rather depiction of a two-dimensional image um, so we're gonna we're gonna press it here and the first thing it will do is it will ask you for an image it needs to work with an image you have to have an image as a source so we're gonna we're gonna work with this and I've got an image here which is an x-ray of a shell so that's the one I'm gonna use and then you have to place the image. You have to say where you want this surface to be generated from. And I'm just going to pick some arbitrary points here, and I'm going to drag that to that point. I'm holding my shift key down here to make sure that uh, I'm snapping that to the grid and making that horizontal. Uh, and then this dialog box will appear, which is the height field settings. So the number of sample points is if you like the resolution, and the height is the height difference between the highest and the lowest points. Um, so I'm going to just set these up as absolutely basic and show you what it does. I'm not going to do anything to, to Rhino's default settings. I'm just going to hit OK. And then you will end up with a surface, um, which kind of looks reminiscent maybe of a shell, but it's very low resolution. It's not particularly useful. We'll put that over here, um, and I'll make another one. So I'm going to do exactly the same command. I'm going to right-click again, and then we will hit this one. And I'm going to should probably to actually I'm going to create a rectangle here, which I'm going to use as a reference and take that from the end to the end. And I'm going to use this as a reference to keep all of my uh, my rectangles the same. So I'm going to do height field again and choose the same shell image. And I'm going to go from end. Oh, oops, go to this end here. And this time I'm going to change the resolution. So I'm going to make this more like, uh, let's say, 80 by 120. As soon as you start going above those figures, Rhino starts spitting out a warning to say you're going to make a massive file here. Uh, but that should be okay. And you can see the difference now. It's a, it's, it's much more reminiscent of the of the actual object that we're working with. Um, this one's probably a little bit high. You can see your your points here, where it's where it's going through the surface are different. So that's that's it set with just changing the resolution, but not changing the height. Um, and the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do exactly the same again. Open it up. Let me show you some of these differences here. Oops. And I'm going to change the height to lower here. I'm going to make this five. And go OK. And that's a little bit more manageable. It's not quite so peaky. But you can actually see the control points emerging, or the sample points emerging as these peaks here that are being picked. Um, so we'll try, the next thing we'll try is I'll show you the difference between this and this is a, um, a surface from control points. Just drop that there. Um, and I'll um, repeat that. from here to here uh, but this time I'm going to do interpolate through and you'll see the difference so you get much more smoothness when you do interpolate through it might be a better result for the kind of thing we're trying to do so really this is a, a, a question with high field map generation it's a question of experimenting and, and saving your results um, I'm going to look at these in, in uh, rendered view so you can see uh, what they look like. So you can see, firstly, on the on the bottom left, you've got a very low resolution default setting, 20 by 20 sample points with a with a 10 millimeter height. This one is uh, 120. These are all 120, uh, 120 by 80, and I'm changing the height between these two. But this last one here, which I probably think is the best one, is interpolated. Uh, the surface has been interpolated through the points. Um, uh, which I think gives you a nicer result. It's less jagged, it's less kind of um, disruptive and noisy than this image here. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit smoother and a little bit more um, manageable, I think. 
um, so it works better. Okay, so that's just generating a surface, and these are effectively, if you like, flat surfaces. So I'm going to show you a little trick to make these into a box or something that we can work with so it becomes a solid. You could print or you could do something with. So I'll delete these guys here and I'll work with this one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box, just a primitive box. I'm going to start from the end here. But I'm actually going to make this box a bit smaller. Where's my box gone? Try again. So I'm going to make this box a bit smaller, not much smaller, just a, just a hair smaller, should do it. And then I want the height to be whatever you want the height to be, so let's say we want the height to be 30 millimeters. Okay, so that box is drawn that and it's completely over the top of this. Um, but what I'm going to do is drop that box down, I'll go to my um, perspective view so I can see. So there is my um, height field mount surface. I'm just going to delete that. There's my height field mount surface, and there's my box. I'll move my box over a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is just make sure that my box, which is this, is actually sitting in entirely inside the height field map. So the height field map um, plane, or the uh, surface, um, projects through the edge of the box. And then it's just a question of trimming, um, trimming bits, the right bits away in order to create this. So I'm going to um, go back to shaded here so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. You can actually see the, the intersection a lot better. So you have to have full perimeter intersection that little nibbly bit going through there shouldn't be too much of a problem, I'll, be, I'll deal with that later. Um, but you might want to just raise this slightly just to make sure we don't have any protrusions coming through. So what we want, if we look at this in x-ray you'll see better what's going on inside there. What we want is the um, box to not be protruding, not coming through this, because uh, we don't. So we don't want the, the top of your height field map to be protruding through the top of your box. So you need to make your box bigger than the entire certain structure, the entire object that you want to make. Um, effectively a bigger bounding box than you need. You also need to make the box smaller, so taller than you need it to be. But you need to make it smaller than the original height field map surface itself. Um, so that's, that's looking about right. And now we're going to trim. So I'll leave it on x-ray to, uh, to trim these. And I'm going to use one object to trim the other one. So the first thing I'll do is trim. I'm going to use this as my trimming surface. I'm going to trim away the top surface there. And that then just basically removes the top surface. But we also need to trim this surface from this surface. So we need to get rid of this outside edge. We need to cut around the outside edge. So I'm going to use the box as my trimming object. I'm going to trim the outside away there. Right now, if it doesn't do that, it means that you haven't got um, full intersection. So there's something touching, or you've got the edges are snapped together, or something like that. You need to have an overlap, a little bit like if you imagine, a bit like making a pie, rolling the pastry out, and making sure that it overlaps the pie dish before you um, before you bake the thing in the oven. You need that to happen before you trim the pie dish around the outside. You need to have that overlap, otherwise Rhino mathematically can't do the trim. If it's not overlapping, it can't do the trim. Um, once we've done that, we can then join, these are two separate surfaces, but if we join those two together now here by pressing join and we watch our command bar, we say two surfaces or poly surfaces joined to one closed poly surface. Well, if it's a closed poly surface, you're probably going to be good to print. Um, we can muck around with this though, we can make this shorter or smaller or whatever we wanted. Um, or we could, for example, contour this if we wanted to. We could slice this up and make this something that we could make um, as uh, an object um, in laser cutting or something like that. Um, but that's effectively height field map generation. Um, I'll go back to um, rendered here so you can see more or less what we have. Um, so we have an image of an object kind of protruding from the surface. Um, it works best with images with a black background. If you have a black background, it means that your um, your base area here is going to be flat. It's going to be in the background. Um, if you don't have a black background, you can stick it through Photoshop and start mucking around with the backgrounds in order to, to change the color. 
if it's a grey background, it'll or a, or, or, a, or a kind of speckledy background. You might have some occasional points that, that start jumping up. If you use the interpolate function, interpolate the the surface through the points, that will minimise the um, the disruption from that from that noise. But you will still see it. Uh, this particular image that I've done, which is an X-ray, is quite suitable, um, and it will give you quite nice results. Um, okay, so that's height field map generation, and that's using height field maps to to create structures, to create objects, um, solids that we could print or cut up or do various things with. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next one.